the odds are about 100% that somebody will be looking at LinkedIn or some other social media to learn more about you to make an important decision about your future. This is our one year anniversary of Walk and Talks. Happy anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> I have a special guest with us. We're hanging out here in downtown Roswell here in Atlanta. And joining me today is Alan Katzman from Social Surety. Hi everybody. So Alan, we've had a full year here of really seeing what's been going on in the world. And yeah. I think we've got some really interesting insights on, I think the growing and undeniable role that social media has with college admissions. Well, we've seen a lot this past year, Danny. Uh, a lot of change. Uh, I think the world of college planning and college admission is really standing on his head with change. I, I think we need to really assess what's going on. I, you know, we, we've, we've heard about the, you know this, this rise of test optional admissions. You and I were talking about this earlier. A lot of what's happening was happening before the pandemic. The change has accelerated as a result. Parents that we're working with, they love hearing about it because once we tell them everything that we see, um, they say, well, that makes so much sense. Of course that's true. You were telling me this really interesting story yesterday about bowling. And ah. let's, let's go into that. Okay. Before the pandemic, I used to um, be invited to speak to a lot of students, high school students. And to try to make the point of what we're talking about, right? I would say, imagine that you were just named the coach of the college bowling team. And you had 50 students wanted to join the bowling team. They all put on their uh, resume for, for uh, joining the team. Their average, their bowling average. Yeah. You know, half of them had, you know, averages of 290, uh, 25%, 292, and, you know, some people even averaged, you know, 295. Yeah. Most, most everyone had bowled at least one perfect game of 300. So I said, okay, there you have 50 people who want to join the bowling team. You can only pick five. Yeah. How do you do it? Well, look at the bowling average. And they said, well, we can't just look at the bowling average. And it's like, well, it's funny, bowling is the only sport where there's a cap on how good you can, you can't bowl any better than a 300. Yeah. Just like in a GPA, you can't get any higher than a four. That's right. I mean, some, some, some people cheat with that, but that's okay. So what would you look at if the average doesn't tell you? And they would say, well, we want to know whether they would be committed to coming to practice. Are they, would they be good teammates? Are they coachable? Are they leaders? Well, if they, if they have a problem, would they quit or would they work through it? So I said to them, exactly. And yeah. from there, then they realize what we've been talking about. Yeah. That schools want to know, have always wanted to know much more about the student than just grades and test scores. Because they're putting together a community. They want leaders. They want people who are going to work through the problem, who are good, you know, good team players, who will collaborate with others, who will contribute to the, to the college community. So it's that, that, that element of that bowling analogy, growing level of character-based college admissions, right? And you, if, you'll see this thing. Do, will you fit here? Are yeah. you a good fit? Yeah. Right? And that's all part of what we're talking about because colleges, right, you and I understand, they, they want students who are going to thrive and graduate. <laughs> yeah. Like I said earlier, um, if you look on the college's website, they're, they're telling you who they want. Oh. They're, yeah. they're telling you who they're looking for. But unfortunately, the, the main channel of applying, which is the, yeah. the common app, maybe the essay, the transcript, it doesn't really give students an avenue to express who they are. I exactly, this is what we're saying. This is the gamesmanship, right? Yeah. We're looking for X, we're looking for Y, we're looking for students who will take advantage of the resources that we have, who are yeah. intellectually curious, who will contribute to the community. But yet, they're looking for that differentiating information, Danny, but as you yeah. said, letting applicants apply to them by using the common app, which to work for everybody dilutes the information and it doesn't give them enough information to that they're hungry for, that they're craving for. And, and yet they can't move away from the common app because that's going to work against their US News and World Report rankings because they need, they need to make it easy for people to apply. 
right? So they can have a lower acceptance rates. So what we've seen, and we think it makes perfect sense, we have students build their digital narrative, tell their story on social media, and that becomes a supplement to their college application. This is to me the one side of the coin of how do we build channels so that we're discoverable to the colleges yep. and so that so that the colleges can get a much more complete, well-rounded view of who you are as an applicant, as a student. But where, where my head space, space has been a lot lately is how we help students leverage social media to learn about the colleges. Okay, it's yeah. a two-way street. It's not just colleges sure. looking at students. It's students looking at colleges, looking at potential career paths. And I was spending some time with a student and walking through the process of hey, here's how we're going to use LinkedIn. Let's look at re research careers. Let's research companies that we want to work for. And she was so excited about it that she actually called me back and wanted me to go through it again of, hey, can you show me how I can use LinkedIn to look up a company like Tesla? Because that's a, that's a company I'd love to work for. How do I do a company search? How do I find these employees? Or I want to research my major. Can you show me how to do that again? And that, to me, that's the other side of the coin is we're not just using it as a channel for colleges to discover and see who we are, which is important, but now we're using it as a proactive tool of reaching out, researching careers, researching colleges, and I've just been spending a lot of my time there. Well, LinkedIn is, as you know, is, is priceless. If you think about it, right, there's over 150 million uh, Americans on LinkedIn Jeez, and for that high. LinkedIn knows where we went to school yeah what we majored in yep. where we work and what we do so think if you can aggregate all that data you can see career paths how can you get a 16 or 17 year old who's never maybe has never worked on LinkedIn and and you know we work we the first thing we tell them this is not your resume but when like you when we show them all this information and how they can use it as a research tool and how they can find people that who may serve as mentors mm -hmm. to them um, once they see that and they see that their their preconception of what LinkedIn is may not be what it really is then their digital nativism just takes over and they really can work the network and get a unique education and a unique insight into colleges and everybody that we've worked with, you know, has just, I think, benefited themselves and increased their likelihood of the yeah. outcomes they want by using this as a tool. Well, this is one thing I really, a point I really like to make. You know, when you take that SAT and they get that score, what do you do with it afterwards? You're done, right? You move on. When you write that college essay, it's done its job, you're done, you throw it away. LinkedIn isn't like that. It's there. It's yeah. not, okay, we got into the school of our dreams, we use this LinkedIn page to research this college, give colleges the ch right channels to see who we are. Now, when I'm in college and I'm springboarding myself to a career, I don't just throw LinkedIn away, I take it with me. That's right. Well, you know, and we, we, were, we were talking last night and you know, one of the things that I say is that from high school to college, or you know, high school, college, and a scholarship, uh, from college to an internship or to grad school and from an internship or grad school to employment at some point during that right life development process yeah the odds are about a hundred percent that somebody will be looking at LinkedIn or some other social media to learn more about you to make an important decision about your future